this is from a choice delivery, even though it was delivered as a separate package. It was a combination order with multiple things. There's supposed to be 50 of these pot knobs on here. So the inner diameter, I'm getting around 5.85 millimeters. The outer, around 7.5 millimeters. Well, it looks like I got 42 out of the 50 I ordered, but that's better than zero because this is the item I've been trying to order and receive since the end of January this year, and now it's July. Two different occasions I placed an order for these. Months after the first order in January, I finally got a refund. I'm still waiting for a refund on my second attempt at ordering, April 2nd. They keep putting countdown timers saying it's still in transit. Let's see what happens. So this was the third one. I ordered it with choice delivery, and nine days later, I got it. Only thing is, I have eight less than I paid for, but I can only do so much. The reason I wanted these, if I have these physically small potentiometers, these are the thinnest knobs I can put on there, and it's still within the body width of the pot, so that's as good as I can get. And I can put these pots as close as I can physically put them on a board and have access to these similar to something like this. So instead of using this huge one, that can be for a main feature like a volume or tone or delay time or something. But if there's a tweak setting, like a transistor bias voltage adjustment that you're only going to do occasionally, it's good to keep that out of the way so you don't accidentally change that too often. But you can cram more settings in a small space. So I wanted to get these knobs, except it's been so long waiting for them, I forget exactly what I was going to use them for at the time, but now I've got them, I can do all kinds of things. And the reason I'm buying actual knobs for these small potentiometers on these effects, that's the potentiometer shaft itself, like this, except it has the markings built in. This one doesn't, it's meant to have a knob put on it separately. So ideally I would just like to get these potentiometers where you don't even need the knob, but I'm having trouble finding this style locally that I can order without having to import it and go through all the hassles of that. So for now this is my solution. This I believe I ordered last year. These are encoder switches. It says 10 bit 0 through 9. ERD110RS. That conveniently fits in a breadboard, three pins on each side, and this goes from 0 through 9. It locks into fixed positions, and it's hard to see, but I think there is a direction arrow pointing to the left if you look at it a certain way. I think the center on both sides is common, and then in the four corners you have a different binary counter output for an encoder. So if I go to position one, one of those other pins should now make contact with common. Right there, that corner should be output one. Now if I go to two, I should not get continuity on one, and I should get it on whatever's pin two. That's that opposite corner. Based on zero through nine, we get a four-bit binary output shorting to a common. This feels and sounds like a container of parts, like transistors or capacitors or trim pots. There's supposed to be 50 pieces, so I guess five each of 10 values of multi-turn trimmer pots, but it doesn't give me what the values are. This is 502, so 5k. 203, so 20k. So I just wanted to see. So we have a range of, I think, 500 ohms up to a meg. That should be enough variety in case I need a trimmer, and it does need to be at a specific value in a given circuit, not just any old voltage divider providing a reference voltage. I have some trimmer pots from years ago, but 
you never know when you're going to need a variety. And I believe this is parts restocking. This one says 4011, so quad NAND gate, but this one is not very clear. It's one of those labels that have all the possible part numbers from the original listing. So I don't remember which one I ordered, but it's a quad op amp. There's the 4011, kind of hard to see through the plastic. And the quad op amp TL074. That makes sense because I've been using a lot of TL072 when I needed a dual op amp. But I want to try some stuff where I'm going to need more op amps on a single circuit. So I thought I should get a couple of these quads. The 4011 is what I used on this 555 binary counter PCB with NAND gates on it. So I wanted to make sure I've got a good enough inventory for if I want to do further things like this. And I'm always using op amps in audio related stuff. So when I want surface mount, I'll have those. And another choice delivery, of course. I'm going to have to black out a label. This didn't say what it was on the envelope, and there's no sticker on here. It's a SOT23. It's probably a voltage regulator, 17L50. I don't really order anything except 5 volt, 3.3 volt, or adjustable LDOs in this package size. If there was something else like a certain transistor, I'm sure I'd remember having ordered it for a special purpose. This has a sticker, and it says it's a power supply ATX breakout, and it has an enclosure. So now that I know what this is, I ordered this around December, so I'm only just opening it. Looks like it can plug into a 20 or 24 pin computer ATX power supply. It has an on off button here, and it looks like there's also an external way to control the on off. I believe this here is supposed to be some sort of infrared sensor so you can test if a remote control is working. Although I'm not sure why we would need that on a power supply breakout. We got six USB 5 volt outputs and screw terminals for plus and minus 12, plus 5, 5 volt standby, and 3.3. So that'll give us a secure way to wire things up. As far as I know, the 5 volt standby is always on as long as power is plugged in on the power supply. So that way you can power standby circuits in a computer and have it maybe power USB ports when it's asleep, control its power on, things like that. I got this similar concept breakout board five or six years ago. So it has plus and minus 12, plus 5, and plus 3.3 with fuses and a power switch. But sometimes you might want fancier features. So I heard about this from another maker and I ordered it. And I have an old ATX power supply here. I'm going to see if I can hook this up and see if it works. The 5 volt standby green LED came on as soon as I plugged this in. So from ground to 5 volt standby, we have 5.1 volts. And there shouldn't be anything really on the other rails. So I'm just going to hit this on off push button. Now the fan is coming on and I can see all the other power lights. There's 3.3 measuring 3.4 plus 5 is 5.37 minus 12 is showing minus 10. I wonder if it regulates more when it's loaded down or if it's just always approximately in this ballpark. And then plus 12 is plus 10.86. I wonder what I can find for the USB to do a test. I found a USB-C breakout board. It's hard to work with this. I don't like ground and 5 volts being right beside each other when I'm trying to probe. So I'm going to go 5 volts and then the shield. And there's 5.38 volts. The same as 5.38 on the board directly. I located an infrared generator. So right here, there's a red LED that will blink, probably at the data rate, when I send out IR. 
over here. I'm just pressing. There's that red LED intermittently. Oh, you can see it on this remote control too. So on the board, there's that red LED that comes on when the remote's red LED is on. So it is picking up IR, but I don't know why I want to test this on a power supply board. I definitely will be putting that to use before I reach for this. So that's a bunch of fun stuff. These thin potentiometer knobs getting me one step closer to making an effect pedal in a box, miscellaneous other parts for upcoming stuff, and this power supply breakout is going to keep these power supplies doing things better than just sitting around collecting dust in a bin. And really, unless I have an old retro PC that needs a replacement supply, these aren't going to power a modern computer, so better to get them up and running on the workbench. So thanks to another maker for pointing that out to me, and thanks to supporters of the channel for helping make all this possible.